The movie was incredible. It was jumping, just had me, you know, rocking on my seat, you know. It was an experience of a lifetime. It was cute. It was way really cute. I loved it. It was brilliant. It really was. I recommend it. It's a tear jerker. I think everybody should see this movie. Hey guys and welcome to a brand new Real Reactions exclusive. I'm Leslie Diana and today I'm here with first time Hollywood director and a recent Emerson grad, Todd Strauss Schulson, to talk about his new movie, A Very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas. So first of all, Todd, congratulations on this movie. It's absolutely hilarious. You are so good at talking on camera. Oh, well, you are too. You're so you good at directing. You just turned it on just now. This is crazy. I tried. I'm saving my energy for this. <laughs> so now I have the $45,000 a year question. How did your education here at Emerson pay off in the real world? I feel like the people that I met while I was here and the ability to make things immediately, get your hands on a camera and make stuff with people that you liked, became the most important thing that happened to me at Emerson. All of we, 35 of us who were all friends at Emerson moved out to LA together and all lived in the same area, editors and producers, a lot of comedy kids, a lot of comedy troupe kids, um, other directors, writers, we all moved out together and continued our relationship. Um, you know, I booked this movie eight years out of college, I think, and the reel, my reel of work that got me this movie was made with Emerson kids. Now, you graduated about a year before the first Harold and Kumar movie came out, so were you a fan back then? We were. All, you know, um, Dave Lebensfeld, who's sitting over there, who did all the special effects in the movie, who I've known since I was 13, we all like watched the movie for the first time on DVD. I saw the second movie opening night in Los Angeles with a buddy also. And uh, so I was a fan of the franchise. And when they sent me the script for this one, I just was excited to read it. Like, I wanted to know what happened to those guys. You are pretty similar in age to where the characters are right now. So do you see any of yourself in any of the characters? You know, Harold Kumar, Neil Patrick Harris, perhaps? I, um, the mo this movie is crazy, and it feels like you're strapped to a rocket while you're watching it, and there's a baby on cocaine, and there's lesbian nuns, and all that stuff is happening. But in the middle of the movie, in the center of it, is this story about two ex-friends becoming best friends again. And, but really what we talked a lot about, John and Cal and I and the producers and John and Hayden, the writers, a lot, more than you would expect even, is it really is about guys approaching 30 and trying to straddle the line between being an adult and being a kid. I turned 30 four days into shooting this movie, so I was going through exactly that as I was directing this thing. So, you know, I had to act like an adult because I was in charge of this movie and all these people were looking at me and they were all 40 or 50 years old and I had to tell them what to do. But also, I just was like an idiot child. I just wanted to play with the fake snow and touch the robot. But was it a challenge for you as a director to take on a movie that's the third in a series that's already so popular? Uh, it, was, it was challenging because there is a pretty hardcore fan base, of which I'm a part. And so when I went and even to start talking about the movie, I wanted to make the movie as a fan. Like, I didn't want the straight-to-DVD version of the franchise. I wanted, like, the bigger, badder, epic, you know, Balls to the wall movie. I went and I pitched the movie like I wanted to be the Christopher Nolan of the Harold and Kumar franchise. I said it with a straight face to the head of a studio, and he bought it. I shot Santa Claus in the face. He's real, and I shot him in the face. What? You were talking about how John Hurwitz and Hayden Schlossberg wrote all the films. What kind of collaborations did you have with them before? The, when the studio was excited about me making the movie, I got introduced to all of the guys. I met John, I met Calais, I met Neil. Mm -hmm. But we all liked very much the idea that Harold and Kumar were going to hijack a Christmas movie, and we wanted all very much to make a Trojan horse movie, where on the outside it looked and felt and sounded like a really warm, nice, sentimental Christmas movie. It was classical, and the images were beautiful, and the score was big like Home Alone or something. But inside of it was this like perverse, raunchy, godless, R-rated nonsense. Must help you still alive. What are you talking about? We saw you get shot. In that whorehouse? In Texas. You branded a prostitute. Remember? You have to be more specific. I wanted to make the movie feel bigger and richer. I wanted the car crashes to be like awesome car crashes. I wanted it to be uh, more visual. I wanted this to be a visual movie. These movies are episodic in nature. They're adventure stories. The idea was to sort of keep that sweetness, uh, to get rid of all the cynicism in the movie, and to make it sweet and nice and sentimental, and then to really ratchet up the adventure and the action. And now, how did the 3D aspect play into the production of this? I understand you had to use 3D cameras. Yeah, we shot it in uh, native 3D. Uh, 3D was awesome. They, when the, I first read the script, I, they, it wasn't in 3D. And then I went in and I started to talk to the studio people and the producers about it, and they mentioned they were thinking of doing it in 3D, and at first I was like, oof. <laughs> 
sounds like a bad idea, guys. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, oh, wait a second. This is kind of actually an amazing gimmick. I love this idea. Mm -hmm. The world's first stoner movie ever in stereoscopic 3D. And also, but I liked the idea, it was also arguably the first narrative comedy in 3D in an incredibly long time. Mm -hmm. um, all those things felt like cinematic firsts. I got excited about doing something that was so stupid but so epic at the same time. Time and I had been watching a bunch of William Castle movies at the time. He was this horror director in the 50s and 60s. He was like a low rent Hitchcock who made a movie called The Tingler and would put like a vibrator under your seat so when a scare happened, your seat would buzz. He was a showman, and I liked the idea of this movie becoming as much about spectacle as it was about heart and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I liked it. I wanted to amp that stuff up. So things like uh, when Bobby Lee breaks the fourth wall and looks right into the audience to make fun of the 3D and Daddy Daughter Day and all these 3D shout outs. We didn't want to do too many of them, so it didn't become parody. But we wanted to do enough of them, so it felt like the movie's playing a game. Oh, 3D thing jumped the shark by now. You don't understand. It makes Avatar look avatar <laughs> It's going to be amazing. Who are you looking at? But you got to shoot in very iconic locations, like Radio City Music Hall. And as a native New Yorker, I'm sure that was especially exciting for you. What was that experience like? The movie was, takes place in New York. I'm from New York. I really wanted to shoot in New York, New York. Very expensive to shoot a movie there. Yeah. So we shot it in Detroit, and we did a second unit in New York, where we have um, all the B-roll outside of the windows, all the car stuff was blue screen, and that's all New York, all that helicopter footage, that's um, us, that we really shot that. That wasn't B-roll that we bought. We shot that in 3D, which is pretty awesome. That is awesome. We shot the Empire State Building, the red and green Empire State Building. We shot that a week before it was red and green. It was still Hanukkah colors. Oh. So we had to pay off New York City to make it red and green. So how tricky was it to tread the line between staying true to classic Harold and Kumar and not pushing the envelope too far? I think the idea, A, we wanted to push the envelope as far as possible, but I think the idea of scrubbing the movie clean of cynicism and keeping it sentimental is what is interesting about it. That was the challenge, at least for us, is can you leave that movie feeling like the warm fuzzies, like you just had, saw like Miracle on 34th Street and could you feel warm on the inside, even though you just got spoon-fed a bunch of the grossest stuff in your life? Um, what made you fall in love with directing in the first place? This I don't have a good answer for. I don't know. My mother tells me the way that she paints it, and she's been talking a lot about it recently, is that we had a movie theater a couple blocks away, and when I was two years old, I would like point on Friday mornings down at the theater. Like I somehow knew that they were going to change the posters and the marquee, and I would whine and freak out until she would take me in the stroller down the Queens Boulevard to look at the new posters and the new words. Wow. There was just something, I don't know what the deal was with me. It was it's born a, into you, it sounds like. It's a it's weirdo so. about movies. You've worked with Patton Oswalt in the past and other comic geniuses like Stephen Colbert and Louis Black, to name a few. But you've also dabbled in some other genres. So are you going to continue down the comedic path? I think that everything that I'll do will be a little bit funny. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could ever make Drive without any jokes, <laughs> although I'd like to try. But I like the idea of being able to mix those genres. So I like the idea of doing an action movie where the action is really legitimately awesome, like a, you know, The Rock, like a really good action movie or something, and then have it also be funny and a little bit silly. I like the idea of doing, you know, like um, a horror movie, but where the jokes are real jokes. To me, this is like just a Christmas movie with a lot of like ridiculous stuff in the middle of it, and I like being able to mix those things. Now, to leave the interview on an inspiring note, do you have any advice that you could give to students who want to do what you've done? I think that just making a tremendous amount of work is helpful. When I was in school, there were some students who talked a lot about movies and had a tremendous amount of film history, film knowledge, and made one short and then talked about that short for the next year. I made, you know, me and my friends, we were all an ambitious group of people, just made a 20, 30, 40 things, just too much stuff, too much, almost to the point where it was a problem. But I think that that was the most important thing, earning confidence through the experience of making things, failing, succeeding, figuring out why, just making so much stuff, and I think that that's the trick. Hi, I'm Todd Strauss-Schulson, the director of A Very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas. I went to the school. I'm Miss Bennigan's, and you're watching The Emerson Channel.